Greetings. So glad you could be with me today as we're in God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word series. We're in Daniel, beginning to get into the opening chapters, the first six chapters of Daniel, and benefit from what God has chosen to breathe out of his word for us in that amazing book. We're going to pick up our reading today in that first chapter, beginning in verse 5. And the king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate, and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. And among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. We've been talking in these opening days in our study of Daniel about the history surrounding this book. It's occurring, it begins at 605 BC with the, the, with the defeat of Judah under the, at, against the armies of King Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonians. At that point in time, as Judah was defeated, there was a brain drain that occurred as Nebuchadnezzar's policy there and other places was to take the most promising of the young people who were out of the nobility and royal families, take them away from their homelands, take them to Babylon, indoctrinate them, change them, turn them into people whose loyalties would be for the Babylonian Empire and would serve in various administrative capacities for Babylon. One of the people that was pulled away, and we saw, therefore, was gifted in all of these ways and also from the nobility, was Daniel. And we've examined some of that. As he was taken away and dramatically taken away, we saw that God created a number of faith testers in Daniel's life. Yesterday, we looked at the first three of these. It wasn't just Daniel. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as well. We saw how he was forcibly taken from his family and friends and let, talked about the implications of all of that. And yet, Daniel remained faithful to God despite it. We saw how he was faithfully, re, uh, forcefully resettled in this foreign country, a new culture, new languages, new mentalities. And we also saw that he was forcefully indoctrinated in the world, in the enemy's perspectives, a transition of worldviews. Now let's pick up our study because there's some more things we want to see about this particular period in Daniel's life as a young teenager, 12 to 15 years of age. The passage also tells us, particularly as we read it in verse 6 in 7, Daniel, along with his friends, was forcefully renamed and renamed with the names of false gods. Now consider that. You say, well, I don't think that's quite as important as the forcefully taken, forcefully resettled, forcefully indoctrinated. Well, let's consider it a little bit because it was equally a test of faith for a faithful person. Somebody who's not faithful, who doesn't really care whether God, what God's views on things and views of himself, it's irrelevant what happens that might curtail it. But for somebody who is determined to be faithful to God, Daniel was determined that way. This was a major testing of faith. It was a humiliating and depressing outcome of his new situation as a slave instead of in the elite of nobility or royal family. Think for a moment in your own life what it would be like if you were forced to now have the name of a hated God, of a hated opposition. You could no longer be called your current name. Now, every time anybody referred to you, they would use a name you absolutely hate. In my case, you could say, Gary, you can no longer be called Gary. From now on, we're going to call you Allah's man. Well, Allah is a false god, not the god of the scriptures. I don't want to be known as Allah's man, especially every time somebody addresses me. Well, in this case, something very similar was happening to Daniel and his three friends. You see, each of their Hebrew names, which we encounter in verse 6, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, 
each of their Hebrew names linked them in a special way to the true God, to the God of Israel. Verse 7, however, tells us that the chief of the eunuchs gave them names Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. And each of these new names, and again, they had no choice about having the new name. It was simply mandated that's what they would be called. Each of these Babylonian names was linked to the false god, not the god of Israel, but the false god. What a trauma in the life of a young teen or anyone at any age who is being trying to be or determined to be faithful to God. Let's look at these transitions. Daniel is the Hebrew, is rooted in the Hebrew name or the Hebrew phrase God is my judge. How wonderful. L is the is Hebrew for God. It, God is my judge. You're reminding yourself every time you hear your name that the one before we whom we must stand, the one who knows the truth of our hearts, and the one who responds to what the realities are in our life with accountability is the God who is really there. Daniel now is called Belteshazzar. And what that means is that Bel protects the king. Bel was the center god, the, the peak of the pyramid as far as the gods who made up the Babylonian polytheism. Every time Daniel would hear himself addressed from this point onward, he, his name would mean Bel, this false god, is protecting the king and keeping him in power. How would you like that? Hananiah, his friend, his Hebrew name means the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. He's now named Shadrach, which means the command of a coup. A coup was the god of the moon. Important, not quite as powerful as Bel, but an important god. And so now you're saying, now every time you're addressed, it's that this a coup commands things and it gets done. <laughs> How would you like that? Instead of, my God, the God of Israel is gracious. Now this false God is the one who commands. Mishael had the, his Hebrew name, Mishael, meant who is like God? Who is like the Lord? It was a way of saying, our God is unique. He's not like a man. And there's no one like him. He is the God, the true God. He is named Meshach. And the meaning of Meshach is, who is what a coup is? And a coup was another of the false gods. And therefore, the name that he was given was essentially saying, what a wonder a coup is. Instead of, who is like Jehovah, Elohim? Can you imagine what a change? Finally, Azariah, his name means, the Lord is my helper. And he is changed to Abednego, meaning, I am a servant of Nego. Nebo could also be uh, what it means. And in both cases, it's referring to a false god. In other words, uh, I am a servant of the false god. Truth comes from his ideas, Nebo's ideas, not from God. What radical transitions a name can make. And they had to face the rest of their lives being called those other names within the culture God had sent them to. So let's recap it. Daniel and his friends were forcefully taken from their family and homes, forcefully resettled in a far and foreign land, forcibly, forcibly trained to become a helper and a better of the enemy, forcefully renamed with godless names that were really a denial of the truth of God. And in each case, how would you have responded? Next time, we're going to look at how Daniel and his friends responded to these traumas of faith as early teenage people. But before I end today, let me say this about how they responded. There is no indication in the book of Daniel that they responded to these terrible traumatic things with a root of bitterness toward God. Hebrews 12, 12, 15 warns us to not let a root of bitterness spring up in us. I see no indication in my study of God's word 
of any root of bitterness bringing up in these people. We tend to think, well, people are going to be bitter against God if anything bad happens in their life, and maybe many times we see that happening. Not so with Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No root of bitterness. Confusion? Certainly. Pain? Certainly. Bitterness? No. Well, join me tomorrow as we begin to see what they did and how they responded in practice to the dilemma that they found themselves in. God bless.